Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Hay Bike's new Hay Bike City Run. Now this is their upgraded version of the Hay Bike Cityscape. There's a lot of awesome upgrades on this bike compared to that bike. However, it does come with a substantial price increase. Not quite sure exactly what it is going to be released at. I believe it's gonna be somewhere around $1,500 but I will put that information down below in the description for you guys to go directly to their official website to check it out and confirm for the price for yourself. And if you are interested in purchasing one of these e-bikes after watching this video, I will leave down below in the description uh, any coupon codes that I could possibly get for you guys to help you save a few bucks. And if you do use that link, it will be an affiliate description. I mean, an affiliate link, and I will receive a small commission at no extra cost to you which is what helps support the channel. So thanks in advance, guys. So the first thing I noticed about this e-bike is uh, the first major upgrade is this thing comes with RSX hydraulic disc brakes in both the front and the rear. Uh, I'm not quite sure on what size the rotors are. I'll throw that up here on the screen because it didn't say on them, but I'll go ahead and measure them and I'll put that up here on the screen for you guys. But the first thing like i said is the hydraulic brake upgrade on this version um, very very nice brakes as far as stopping power goes and no squeaks or squeals whatsoever so let's go ahead up this hill with throttle and see how far we can get this is the test i do with all my e-bikes so we'll see how far we can make it on just throttle only and then we'll get on to the rest of the ride test show you guys the max speed of the bike and a bunch of other different things so I'm gonna go ahead here to PAS5 because the throttle is limited to whatever pedal assist level you're in. So you have to be in pedal assist five to get full power. Now, another upgraded thing on this bike versus their original Cityscape is it has a 500 watt motor. Now it's showing that it's putting out a max of about 720 some watts, I believe. I'm in the wrong gear here, but it took me down to about a little bit past the end of that guardrail uh, before I had to start pedaling. So it's about a 500 watt bike, probably somewhere similar to their other uh, Hay Bike Mars and the Hay Bike Ranger, probably pretty similar power wise compared to those bikes as well. So another awesome upgrade is the 48 volt 15 amp hour battery that they provide with this bike which goes in the frame right here really nice you don't see the battery really nice that they integrated that into the frame and their original cityscape if you guys remember that review i did it was a 36 volt bike and i believe a 350 watt motor so very very nice upgrades on this bike guys and it has some premium features as well it has a bluetooth app that i'll show you guys a little bit about later uh, it has an auto light for the front and the rear light. Awesome lights on this bike, guys. So when you turn the bike on, you can see in the center there, there's a hay bike that lights up. That is in both the front and the rear light. So as soon as you turn, it's like a running light, which is pretty cool. And it has an auto sensing feature on these lights. So when it gets dark out, there's a sensor right on back of this headlight. When it gets dark, I'll cover the sensor. That light should come on. And then when it senses light again, I removed my finger, the lights will automatically go out. So no matter what guys, when it's dark out, these lights will come on automatically and shut off automatically when it's daylight, or you could turn them on with the switch on the handlebars and leave them on all the time if you want. However, don't forget to shut those off whenever you turn the bike off and don't accidentally hit the button on because the lights can stay on when the bike is turned off. So you can drain your battery if you forget to shut those off. But very nice lights on this bike, guys. Got a brake light in the back, which flashes. It doesn't get brighter, but it flashes. And this bike also has turn signals, guys. Awesome, turn signal in the front headlight and also turn signals in the rear. So very, very nice, guys, on the lighting system and safety on this bike. And for those of you that I know are gonna comment and say that my seat is too low for, for the proper leg extension, I know guys, I leave it down low like this when I'm filming because it's easier for me to touch the ground because I'm about five foot eight and it's easier for me to touch the ground, just easier for me to film and get the angles when I'm riding one-handed. So 
Thanks for your uh, concerns, guys, but that is why I usually have my seat a little bit low. Man, there was a big boulder in the middle of the road back there and some loose grass clippings here. Guys, definitely watch for them grass clippings. If they're wet, you can wipe out. So be very cautious of those guys. Always pay attention to what you're, uh, what's on the road ahead of you. Like uh, these guinea hens. You don't want to hit one of those. <laughs> All right, so let's test out the pedal assist levels on this bike, guys. You can make it zero to three, zero to five, or zero to nine. You can have nine different levels of pedal assist, but you can't adjust each level individually. Now, with that being said, they have this thing toned way down on level one, so I'm able to travel at like six to seven miles per hour here on pedal assist one. It it puts out a very very minimal amount of power on one almost like you're pedaling the bike without the motor it just gives you a slight little bit of power which is going to be really excellent for people that are getting used to the bike and doesn't want you know a ton of power to start and doesn't want it to throw them off and your throttle is going to be limited to that as well when you're in pedal assist one so no surprises it's not going to throw you off and it's going to be very easy to get used to if you're not used to riding an electric bike so pretty nice even though you can't adjust the levels individually um, seems like they have it tuned in pretty good for uh, a lot of different people if you want the max throttle and the max power just put it up into the higher levels like four or five or if you have it programmed for nine levels put it up around nine and this thing will take off and give you full power with both the throttle or the pedals now if you're going up a hill and you're only in pedal assist one like you can see here i'm in gear four and i'm almost at a complete stop it's gonna slow me down big time i'm only going like three miles per hour four miles per hour but that's like i said because their pedal assist one is so tuned in so low which is going to be nice for a lot of people like i said but just bump them pas levels up and pull you right up those hills no problem well to some extent if you have a huge hill it's not going to take you up it but you should always help pedal it in the lower gears to help it out anyway but we're gonna go over the max speed on this bike once we get down on a straight stretch but I do want to give a little spoiler alert guys this bike is programmed to a class 2 bike which is 20 miles per hour and you can't turn the speed up like you can on the Ranger I don't know why some of the bikes they allow you to turn up and some they don't um, you know a lot of people like being able to unlock them if they're going to ride off-road and you know keep it legal riding off-road you're, you're able to unlock into a class 3 and they said they wanted to keep this bike at the legal limit of 20 miles per hour so we're going to be testing that later on like I said down here and we'll see what we can get it up to if we can get it up a little bit past 20 miles per hour all right so the bike that they sent me guys this is a sample model and the only thing that's different on this one as far as features go is the one that they sent me has a suspension seat post which is really nice most of their bikes do have this but they did let me know before making this video that their production bikes will not have a suspension post and the reason why they won't is because they took into factor uh, they wanted this bike to be able uh, to be ridden by shorter riders so they put the non-suspension seat post in the bike to get it down probably around another two inches so the seat height the minimum seat height with this suspension seat post is about 32 inches from the ground so i'm assuming that with the non-suspension seat post the minimum seat height should be around 30 inches which isn't too bad and will accommodate shorter riders a little bit better so keep that in mind if you want a little bit more uh, smoothness in your ride you may have to purchase that suspension seat post separately and i'll leave a link down below in the description for one if you guys are interested if you're tall enough for it and want to upgrade to that i believe it's like a 30.4 millimeter post i, I want to say but i'll put that up here on the screen so that you guys know for sure what diameter seat post it is all right guys so we're coming up down here onto the straight stretch so we're going to do just throttle only first in pedal assist five and then we're going to go ahead and pedal and see how fast we can go on this bike so this is pedal assist five throttle only 21 miles per hour on both the display and on the bike so they got this speedometer and odometer dialed in pretty good guys it's shown it's putting out about 330 watts, 360 watts currently. 
this is level ground so oh i hit 22 miles per hour guys so on gps so i would say 21 to 22 miles per hour now i'm gonna go ahead and pedal and see what speed we can go with just pedaling and one thing that's really nice guys about this is they do have an 11 to 32 tooth cassette on this bike so you can tell here i'm at max speed at 21 miles per hour and there is no freewheeling or ghost pedaling as they call it um my cadence is really good here guys and this feels really comfortable to pedal at max speed so got to give them props for putting the right free will on this bike i wish all companies would go with an 11 to 32 on their bikes so that you have good hill climbing assist and also good pedaling when you're in the higher pedal assist levels because most bikes they use uh the wrong free will and you're pedaling like this at, at top speed at like 20 miles per hour so really nice that they included that 32 tooth free or uh 11 to 30 two tooth free will so another thing they upgraded on this bike is the hydraulic front suspension which actually has adjustments on the right hand side with different clicks so you can adjust your compression and then it also has a preload on the left hand side for you to adjust that but really nice front suspension here guys very soft and actually a very nice ride with that suspension seat post it's kind of a shame that they're not keeping that on their uh, production models overall guys pretty nice smooth ride very uh, good seating position i'm mostly upright now it does have that adjustable gooseneck on the front that you can adjust up and down to give you a further reach or a closer reach but i love the mustache style handlebars um, that are on this bike really nice and comfortable guys all right so 5.18 miles so far on gps 5.2 miles on the trip meter so they got that dialed in really really well as well as the speedometer it's very accurate so let's try out these pedal assist levels again here we'll put it on the watt meter there's a meter on the display here it always shows 10 watts for some reason on this bike not sure if that's because that's the minimum amount of power that this bike takes to use with the bluetooth and the headlights and things like that but here's pedal assist one just throttle and you can see i mean it's very slow guys like three four miles per hour here and it's not putting out any wattage right now i think i'm going past the speed limit that's set to on pedal assist one but going to be very nice for people that are afraid to ride an e-bike so let's bump it up into pedal assist two now this one is where it takes off just slightly and i do have it set for max um, start you can adjust it from zero to five as far as how fast it starts and i have it set to the max so about nine miles per hour in pedal assist two pedal assist three looks like about 13 pedal assist four looks like about 16 17 and of course you already seen pedal assist five at a max of around 21 or 22 even though you can't change each one they are programmed pretty nice and again you can also change it to nine different levels of assist which you'll probably have a lot more uh, controllability over the different levels at that point but i usually leave mine set to uh, five different levels of assist i feel like that's what suits me the best all right guys here we go up one of the steepest hills i'm in pedal assist five gear one and with this 32 tooth chain ring i'm able to get or yeah able to give it a little bit better mechanical advantage but i'm still putting some pretty good effort in here guys my legs are actually burning and i should probably be hanging on with two hands to get a little bit better uh, mechanical advantage there on the pedals so it's a little bit on the lighter end of the 500 watt motors I, as far as i mean it's probably like i said pretty similar to their other 500 watt bikes but i would have liked to have seen maybe a slightly more power out of it maybe a slightly bigger controller something a little bigger than the 15 amp controller that this bike uses it would have been nice to see like maybe like a 17 or 18 amp controller in here but overall guys not too bad definitely definitely a huge huge improvement over their initial uh hay bike cityscape no doubts about that 
Like I said, of course, the price tag is a little bit heftier as well. I believe the old Cityscape came in somewhere around eight to nine hundred dollars. You could get it on sale sometimes for around eight, I think. And like I said, I'm not sure exactly on price on this, probably somewhere around 14 or 1500 according to what they told me. All right, guys, here we go up the last long hill. Pedal assist five, gear one. And I'm putting in minimal effort so far. However, we just started. We'll see how it does after we get about three quarters of the way up. We'll see if it limits my power, if it stays about the same. So you are going to have to put in some effort coming up these hills. And as I say in most of my videos, I always recommend pedaling anyway. Helps everything out. Motor, battery, controller. Gives you exercise. Can I actually shift here a little bit? It levels off. And I'll probably shift back down. Now this does have the thumb throttle on the right hand side. Instead of a, a twist throttle. So you do kind of have to let off the throttle whenever you shift. Because you're going to need your thumb for that. So... Uh, keep that in mind guys a lot of people are going to prefer the twist throttle over the thumb throttle, but I don't mind it either way Because you do have that pedal assist to keep you going So I had a downshift back down and my legs are burning guys. I'm not gonna lie They are I am putting in some effort here I'll quit pedaling for a minute So it is pulling me but I am slowing down a little bit, seven, eight miles an hour. So it is pulling me up it, but should help pedal, guys. All right, there we go. Made it to the top, no problem. Never cut power, so pretty good. All right, see you guys. Back closer to my house, and we'll go over all the specs and details of this bike and exactly what you get. Hey bike Mars limited edition, pedal assist five, throttle only. About right here. Hey bike city run, pedal assist five, full throttle. All right guys, so what I wanna show you in the app here, when you go into your personalized settings, you could change your pedal assist levels in there very easily from zero to three to zero to nine. And you can see now I can go up to nine or you could change it back down to three and you can go only to three. So really nice there. You could change your kilometers or miles per hour in there. So just out of curiosity, let's have it on nine and we'll see how fast one goes then. Wow, guys, it's even slower. That's crazy like 1.6 miles an hour on pedal assist one when you're in nine let's try zero to three and see what pedal assist one is when it's set from zero to three so zero to three it is actually a little faster at around six miles per hour so even though you can't change each individual level if you change how many pedal assist levels you have then you do have a pretty good range of different speeds throughout different levels depending on what fits your needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep mine zero to five, which is what I usually have it set at. And one thing I do wanna mention here, you can see that I have assist strength set to five throughout this whole video. Now your speed limit, you can see I have set to 39.1 miles per hour. Now the bike obviously did not do 39.1 miles per hour. And I had to set that in the display to the max speed of like 60 some I think in here. And like I said, the bike still is maxed out at 20 to 22 miles per hour. Once I switch this speed down to a slower speed, I cannot change it back up to 39 miles per hour in here. I have to do that through the display. However, that doesn't really matter because the bike doesn't go that speed anyway. But out of curiosity here, we're gonna set this down to, let's say like, I don't know, 1.2 miles per hour and see how fast the bike will go. I believe it doesn't make a difference what that is set to but we are going to find out yeah see i'm already going past that i'm already going 10 11 12 13 so no matter what you set your max speed limit to in the display or in the app the bike is still going to be locked at one set speed that's a little bit of a bummer hopefully they can update that in the app 
it does look like they can maybe update the app and update the firmware on the bike through the app so that's always nice to see kind of like tesla which is pretty cool and hopefully they can update that that way if you wanted to set the max speed limit to say 10 miles per hour if one of your kids or something were riding the bike and you don't want them to go speeding then you would be able to set that speed limit as of right now it doesn't matter what you have it set at it will still go like right around 20 miles per hour so to reset the trip meter you go into the app go into your personalized settings down here at the bottom it says reset trip distance hit confirm and it resets I haven't figured out a way to reset it from the control pad yet. So you do have to go through the app to do that as far as I know. All right guys, so let's go over all the specs and features of this bike and look at the awesome upgrades that they included on this version. So first and foremost, like I said, it has RSX hydraulic disc brakes on both the front and the rear of the bike. The hand grips on this bike are a faux leather grip and they're brown with a nice brown matching seat. Now the seat in my opinion is pretty soft but nowhere near as comfortable as my Cloud 9 so I'd probably upgrade it to that if I were you. Well I would try this seat out first to make sure you might be okay with it but if you do want an upgrade I'll leave down below in the description a link for the Cloud 9 that I use as well as the cell phone holder that I use and all my other accessories that I've used and recommend like bike alarms, bike chains and things like that to lock your bikes up to keep them from not getting stolen but to prevent people from maybe trying to steal them. <laughs> so next to the left hand grip you have a control switch for turning your headlight on and off. Below that you have your turn signal switch and then a horn button below that. Next to that you have your control pad for turning your bike on for going through the different menus and then you have your up and down for your pedal assist levels if you hold the up button it does turn the display light on and off the backlight on there which you can adjust in the settings here you can also adjust your display light on the display in the app however if you do that then the display light is always on you cannot turn it back off over here you can go in the settings here and change that so that you could turn it on and off from here I prefer to do that that way if I want to turn it off I can when I'm riding in the bright sunlight during the day and I don't need it on so I just set mine on level two which is what I like and then I don't mess with it in the app maybe they'll update that in the future to allow you to uh, change that and they'll fix that like I said if you do end up changing it in the app and then you realize you can't turn it on or off here anymore that's why and you have to go in these settings and fix it so over here on the right hand side of the handlebars you have a thumb throttle and a 7 speed Shimano thumb shifter which leads down to the 11 to 32 tooth freewheel in the back. And like I say guys really nice to see that they put the correct freewheel on this bike and you don't have any ghost pedaling while you're traveling at high speeds. This bike is using a Shimano Tourney derailleur coming up the KMC chain to the 48 tooth chain ring in the front and a decent set of aluminum pedals, non-branded. This bike is sitting on a pair of 26 by 2.5 inch tires. I'm not quite sure what brand the tires are, but I do like the brown to match the seat and the hand grips, and it does have a reflective strip around them, so that's always nice to see. For safety, this has an awesome light in the front that has turn signals in it. And like I said before guys, this center lights up hay bike all the time as soon as you turn the bike on and then the headlight is automatic when it senses night light, nighttime from the back of the light and there's a sensor, the light will come on automatically as well as the tail light in the back. Tail light's pretty nice guys, the only reason it's flashing here is because the shutter speed on my camera, it shouldn't be flashing right now, but it does flash when you pull the brake lever and it does have the turn signals in the rear tail light as well. The bike comes with a set of plastic fenders in both the front and the rear and a really nice aluminum rack on the back for putting a bag or clipping panniers on the side. Really nice to see that they used aluminum. Some bike companies just throw steel racks on the back. I love that they used aluminum to keep the bike's weight down just slightly. Now when I put this bike on my scale and weighed it, it come in right about 62 pounds with the battery so that's not really too bad guys. For power, this bike is using a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery that's housed inside the frame right here. There's a charge port on the side of the frame to charge the battery while it's in the bike, or you could charge the battery also while it's out of the bike. Now that 15 amp hour battery does come with a four amp charger. So really nice 
that it has faster charging you're going to get double the speed versus a two amp charger so really nice to see it's using a 15 amp controller housed down here in the frame powering the 500 watt hub motor in the rear of the bike and according to the display i've seen a max of about 700 sometimes 730 watts there's a setting on here for your wattage and the peak i've seen it was somewhere around 730 watts peak and it does have a set of four mounting screws on the front for you to be able to attach a basket or a rack. I'm not sure what they provide for that. I haven't really looked into it yet. It also has a nice heavy duty adjustable kickstand and a quick release on the front wheel in case you have to put it in back of your vehicle. And like I said, the other awesome upgrade is the hydraulic fork suspension. You have clicks here and if you turn it far enough, it will lock it out. And you have a preload adjuster on the left hand side as well. Very nice cable management coming down the front in my opinion. All the wires are wrapped nicely up here and then they do have the neoprene cover down here like they do on all their other models. And very, very nice adjustable gooseneck just like on the Cityscape. Very nice that you're able to adjust that down or back. I could probably even adjust it up higher if I wanted for less reach. And I love just the way the handlebars are designed and just the comfort of riding this bike. Really good uh, comfort sitting upright on it very good adjustability there overall guys i think it's a pretty sweet looking bike they have a few different colors you can choose from i think i liked the black and white the best that's why i had them send me this one as the sample and pretty sweet looking ride guys compared to their original cityscape a lot of big improvements on here as far as you know everything you're getting extra with the hydraulic disc brakes the better lighting the turn signals the bigger battery that's 48 volts the bigger motor a lot a lot of nice upgrades here guys they also include a bottle holder in the center of the bike which will hold a bottle of water now it could fall out there guys i mean i just went on that eight mile ride and it stayed in there no problem uh, you could put a bigger bottle in there a, an actual bike bottle but really nice holder there that is going to interfere just slightly with the step through but really still easy to access right here don't have to lift your leg up very high so really really good accessibility on this bike for getting on and off of it assembly on this bike wasn't too bad you do have to install the gooseneck it comes with a cap that you don't need you could throw that away once you take that off and it comes with a longer bolt that you have to install you do have to install the gooseneck and line that up you have to install the front fender the front light the rear rack the pedals and then obviously go over the whole bike and adjust everything you have to mount the handlebars on, adjust everything to your liking, adjust the brakes, and just check all the nuts and bolts on the rest of the bike as well. Now the brakes were a little bit hard to get tuned in and adjusted so that they weren't rubbing, but once I got them tuned in, they do seem to be working pretty well. And one other thing about the app, there is in there, it says close to unlock and auto lock. When it's close to unlock, if you have that set, the bike will automatically turn on if you have the app opened up and you're close to it. And then auto lock, it will automatically shut the bike off after 15 seconds of you disconnecting from the app or your app being closed. 15 seconds later, you can actually set auto lock in there for up to three minutes or you can close auto lock. I have it closed. I'm not using that feature right now. And it will automatically turn your bike off if it is not moving. Now. If you have this set and you turn the bike on and you're riding it, it'll continue to go and go. But as soon as you stop 15 seconds later or whatever you have that set at, it will shut the bike off. So it's a pretty nice safety feature for theft, but in my opinion, it's going to get in my way and I probably won't use that much. It would have been nice if they have it set so whenever that's activated, you can't even turn the bike on. That would have been nice. That way it would have prevented somebody from being able to hop on it and motor away. Now they could still pedal it away like a regular bicycle, but that would have been a nice safety feature. They did say that this was their first iteration of this app, so they could update a lot of the things in it in the future. So hopefully it only gets better from here, but it does look like it could use a little bit of work, but it is pretty cool that you do have some easy adjustability there. And you can turn the bike on and off through the app. One thing I do want to note though guys, when your battery is installed in this bike and the bike is off, it always says off on the screen. And you can turn the bike on from your phone if you're connected to Bluetooth. But what's odd is this always says off. So I'm thinking that it's drawing some kind of power to run that Bluetooth 
even though the bike's off and your battery's installed. So I'd be really cautious of leaving the battery in the bike for long periods of time because over time it could drain your battery because it, obviously it's got to use some kind of power for it to stay off and for the Bluetooth to be running, to be searching for your phone and things like that. So not quite sure how much power it's going to use over time, but keep that in mind guys. If you leave your bike set for months at a time, I probably wouldn't leave the battery sit in the bike. Maybe I'll test this and do a test over time and see how long it takes to drain some of the battery. But and I'll update you guys down below in the comments. But as of now, I would just not leave it in the bike if you were storing it for months at a time. And another feature the app does is it will track your ride on a map. However, it does everything in kilometers and I use mile per hour. So not sure how much I'm gonna use that. I'll probably just use something like the Relive app that I normally use when I map my rides. So overall, there's all the specs and features of the Hay Bike City Run. I hope you guys found this video helpful and interesting. If you did, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you see more content like this. I got a lot of awesome, cool videos coming up in the near future. So make sure you guys stick around to see those. And again, if you guys are interested in this bike or anything I talked about in this video, like the accessories, cell phone holder, different bags, things like that that I use, links will be all down below. Click the little arrow next to the title to open up all those links. And I will see you guys around on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.